my shop. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of these fun tongue drums. I'm going to show you how to tune it. I've got some plans for you and I'm even going to show you how to make a pair of these mallets. These drums are part of the idiophone family of musical instruments and basically it's a wooden box with different sized tongues cut into the top to make different notes and the whole box vibrates itself to make it sound. Solid hardwoods are the preferred choice for making these drums and it's good to use a nice tone wood for the top. I don't think the material matters as much for the sides and the bottom as it does for the top, as far as sound goes anyway. Uh, but for a good tone wood, you'll want to use something that's used in other musical instruments like mahogany, maple, uh, walnut, and purple heart are good tone woods. And actually the preferred wood for the tops of these drums is paduke. But I went ahead and made my first three drums out of simple, cheap, everyday materials that I had on hand. Uh, this one over here is made out of solid MDF. And then I made this one out of oak plywood that was left over from a cabinet remodel. And the one in the middle here is made out of regular solid white pine I picked up at the home center. And uh, before I show you how to make one of these drums, what I'd like to do is play each of these for you so you can hear how they sound and I think it will prove that no matter what wood you choose to make one of these drums out of you'll end up with a nice fun to play drum that sounds actually pretty decent so let's hear how they sound first let's listen to the drum that's made out of solid MDF Now let's listen to the drum that's made out of oak plywood. And here's the drum that's made out of solid white pine. You can probably tell that the MDF was the lowest pitch, the plywood was somewhere in the middle, and the pine had the highest pitch. So let me play all three in order real quickly uh, so that you can tell the difference. I'm going to play the top two tongues on each drum. I built all three of these drums in just a few hours using cheap materials. I didn't even tune them and they sound pretty good. So if you don't have a lot of tools, or you don't have access to nice woods, or you don't know how to tune musical instruments, don't let any of that stuff scare you out of building one of these cool little drums. These things are fun, so let me show you how to make one. To get started quickly with building some of these drums, I thought it might be easiest to begin with an existing plan. So I did a Google search for tongue drum plan and one of the first links that came up was to this plan from the October 2006 issue of Wood Magazine. And it's a really nice plan. It makes a nice drum that sounds good. Uh, it's easy to follow. It's got step-by-step -step instructions and pictures and diagrams, even a cut list. And it also includes the uh, template for cutting the tongue pattern on the top. So this is a great place to start. I used it for all three of my drums. Uh, just to show you real quickly a couple of the features. Uh, here's the tongue pattern for the top. It also calls for uh, two handles that make it easy to carry the drum. And those handles double as mallet holders so that you can keep the mallets with the drum. And to raise the drum off the table, it calls for some feet on the bottom and that increases the resonance of the drum, makes it sound better. So that's a great place to start. Uh, for my next drum, I'm going to maybe make it a different size. I'm going to use a different uh, tongue pattern on the top. And one thing I notice is uh, there's not a lot of these tongue patterns out there where you can just download and use them to build a drum. So I've used Microsoft Visio to design a lot of my own tongue patterns. Uh, for different sized drums. So I'm going to provide a link to my designs in the video description. So feel free to download those and make different sized drums and just have fun with them. So uh, let's get started and let's build the drum.
I got these really cool red cedar boards at the woodworking show last season and it's got this really nice coloration to it. So I think these will be great for the body of the drum and then for the top I'm going to use this piece of mahogany that I picked up at the lumber yard. sides and the top cut down to their final dimensions and the drum starting to take shape and it's at this point where I need to stop and make a couple of decisions. Uh, first I need to decide whether or not I'm going to try to tune the top and that's going to have an effect on how I attach the bottom because the way you tune these drums is from underneath the top so I'm going to need access uh, to the inside of the drum. And also, the other thing I still need to do is design my tongue pattern that I'm going to cut in the top uh, now that I know the final dimensions of the top piece. Alright guys, I've decided to assemble the four sides and the top before I cut the tongues. Uh, and then once I cut the tongues out, I'll be able to access them from underneath for some tuning. And then I'll add the bottom later. So for now, it's going to be easier to assemble this in steps because the glue will be gliding around. But I've got my clamps ready, so the first thing I'm going to do is glue the top onto the two sides and let that dry. To make the mallets, all you need are some 1 inch diameter super balls and some quarter inch dowel rods. I got a couple of these five packs of super balls at the Dollar Tree dollar store uh, so that I can make five sets of mallets. All you do is drill a quarter inch hole into the super ball and just glue it onto about a 12 inch section of this dowel rod. glued up and I also glued in two more pieces of cedar on the ends to give it a little more support and to also add some weight and density to the box that uh, should improve the tone and I've got these recessed a little bit to receive a bottom piece so I'm going to cut that out of quarter inch oak plywood and I will recess that into the bottom of the box and I'll attach it with screws that way I can still remove the bottom and access underneath the tongues for tuning. I'm using some of this 3M General Purpose 45 spray adhesive to attach my template to the top. I just want to make sure I line it up straight and centered. To cut the top, I'm going to use a brad point bit to drill a starter hole. And then I'm going to use my jigsaw with a 20 TPI blade that is square to this plate to cut out the tongue pattern.
assembling the drum, you pretty much only get one shot at cutting these tongues out. So uh, let's take off the template and we can see what it sounds like for the first time. All right, are you ready? <laughs> the great thing about these is it's so exciting when you get all the tongues cut because you never know what it's going to sound like. Uh, Every one is different, so let's check it out. Here we go. Well, it's pretty easy to make one of these drums. I mean, after all, it is just a box. But as long as you make square cuts and it fits together tightly and use a template to cut the slits on top, you're going to end up with a nice sounding drum that you don't even have to bother tuning. Uh, most people won't know the difference anyway. But if you do want to go that extra step and try to tune each tongue, uh, you're going to need a tuner of some sort. And what I did was just download a free tuner app on my smartphone. Uh, this one is called Pano Tuner. So I'm going to use that to check each note. And the general rule is to tune a tongue if you want to raise the pitch then you'll remove material from underneath the tip of the tongue. If you want to lower the pitch, you'll need to remove material from underneath the base near where it attaches to the drum. So you could do that with a hammer and chisel or a Dremel tool, uh, but I'm going to try using my drill with a small Forstner bit on the end and just remove a little bit of material at a time and then check it again. To get the drum ready for tuning, you'll want to make sure you've cleaned out all the sawdust and chips between the tongues. You'll want to make sure that nothing else is touching the drum, and you'll want to isolate it from the table it's sitting on. In this case, I'm using these Rockler bench cookies, but uh, you could attach some rubber feet or some felt to the bottom corners to isolate the drum from the table. Let's check the largest tongue on my drum to see what note it plays. I'm going to hold the tuner near the drum but not touching it. I don't know if you can see that, but we're going to try. And then here's the largest tongue. So I'm going to hit that tongue and we'll see what note comes up on the tuner. You can see that it's almost a G, so I need to make a small adjustment. In this case, I need to lower the pitch of that tongue to make it a G, so I'm going to have to remove material from the base of the tongue where it attaches to the drum. And I'm just going to use my Forstner bit. Let's check it with the tuner to see what note it plays after that adjustment. Alright, it did lower the pitch, but it lowered it too much, so now I need to remove some material from the tip. Now let's check it again to see what it reads. Alright, that is right on G, so now I need to repeat that process for each of the other tongues. Alright, I've made all my tuning adjustments, as you can see by these Forstner bit holes, and it was actually easier than I thought it would be. In most cases, I just had to remove some material from the tip to get it to hit directly on a note. But in some cases, I did keep missing the note, and I had to go back and forth between removing material from the tip and the bass in order to get it to hit directly on that note. So now that I've got it tuned, let's flip it over and you can hear how it sounds. I put the tuner down here so you can see what note each tongue plays. So let's run through the notes and keep an eye on this tuner. So that's pretty close. I still might need to make some adjustments, so that's why I made the bottom removable so I could always adjust it later. I finished the drum with 
with several coats of spray lacquer and it turned out great. The red cedar just looks beautiful along with the mahogany top. Uh, it sounds good too. Listen. I'm really happy with it and I'm glad I made a bigger one with nicer wood. Uh, it sounds a lot better than these other ones. Um, tuning was pretty easy. Uh, just remove material from under the tip if you want the tongue to go higher in pitch or remove the material at the base where it connects to the rest of the drum if you want it to go lower in pitch. Uh, that's the basic rule. And there's a lot of scales and stuff out there that you can tune these to and there's even a calculator out there where you can calculate how long the tongue should be to uh, have that note separation that they need. Uh, so I'll include links to all those websites in my video description along with a link to my templates for the tongue patterns on the top. I'm going to play all four drums again so we can compare how they sound and I'd like you guys to vote by leaving a comment on which drum you like the sound of best. Let's start with the MDF. And now the oak plywood. And the solid white pine. And the red cedar with the mahogany top. pretty good but I do like the sound of the nicer woods better and the larger drum as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.